Hello, I'm Archie Luxury and welcome to the program. Today I'd like to continue another video with my good friend Peter Matto. And uh, Peter is really, he's, uh, his segment is proving popular and uh, he's a wonderful kid. I really, really like this guy and uh, he's, he's destined for wonderful things. And uh, anyone who is so enthusiastic about watchmaking, you can just tell they're going to go a long way in this profession. And uh, Peter's now put together another video, a soundtrack, talking about the Geneva Seal. The Geneva Seal is a type of certification that watches like Patek Philippe, Vacheron, have. And... Uh, the Geneva Seal itself has recently been, been uh, awarded to people like Cartier. And uh, Patek has very recently, they have replaced the Geneva Seal with the Patek Philippe Seal. But for this video here, uh, Peter is going to talk about the Geneva Seal. And both my Pateks, my 5107 Calatrava and the 5035 Annual Calendar, both those pieces are Geneva seal pieces. And uh, I, I personally, whilst I think the Patek seal is fantastic, I'm, I, I really do like the Geneva seal and all it stands for. Please enjoy this clip and please send some thank yous, leave some comments for Peter. And hopefully, if Peter will do us the kindness, he will produce more recordings which I will upload. Hello everyone, Peter here again. Today I'm here to explain to all of you what the Geneva Seal on a Movement is. Now before we ask what the Geneva Seal on a Movement is, we really should ask what the Geneva Seal is itself. Now the Geneva Seal was introduced roughly around the 19th century uh, it was an, an effort to recognize which watches were counterfeit and which ones were true quality. The seal uh, is it's the quality seal of the watchmaking school of Geneva. It was given its legal status in 1886, which made it legally certified. And along with that, it received 12 rules that it had to be uh kept to. Now the seal originated and remains in Canton of Geneva and the timepiece is then inspected by seven members of the Poinçon de Geneva. Now the Poinçon de Geneva is the hallmark of Gen Geneva rather, or the Geneva seal. Now the seven members are certified to carefully analyze and inspect every timepiece every part in the piece whether it has 100 or even a thousand parts is individually checked and tested by these seven now they check for 12 specific criteria if they if even one of these is not met the watch does not get the Geneva seal I got I pulled these criteria off of timezone.com so I'll read them to you and try to, I'll explain most of them, the ones that have a lot of mumbo jumbo in them where you know you really don't even know what the hell I'm even talking about. It's really hard to explain so I'll just leave it as it is. Now uh, Geneva Seal Criterion number 1A. The workmanship of all the calibers components including those of additional mechanisms must meet the requirements of the office for opt optional inspection of Geneva watches <clears throat> and what this really means is just that the parts are flawless they're perfectly finished and crafted Geneva seal criterion number 1b steel parts must have polished angles and their visible surfaces smoothed down screw heads have to be polished with their slots and rims chamfered with chamfered meaning beveled uh, so this means the 90 degree angles on the bridges of the watch and the sides of the watch must be beveled or flattened to at least a 45 degree angle and then they're polished which is carried on to the screws as well. 
So it just overall adds to the, you know, overall beauty on the edges of the watch, on the edges of the bridges. It just looks more pleasant as opposed to, you know, a jagged 90 degree edge. For example, if you look at uh, a Patek Philippe, you look at the bridges. The bridges is a perfect example of that beveling with that polishing on there as well. Uh, Geneva seal criterion number two. All movements must be provided on the train and escapement with ruby jewels having polished holes. On the bridge side, the jewels must be half frosted with polished sinks. The end stone for the center wheel on the base plate is not required. Now what this means is, when the train is referred to, they're talking about all of the main gears of the watch and the parts that run and turn every day. They're saying that, <coughs> excuse me, the jewels that hold these parts must have a polished hole to reduce the friction when they run and turn every day. Now, when you think of a jewel and a ruby being put into a watch, they're not taking an actual ruby with, you know, facets and all that and putting it in. No, they're not doing that. It's a lab-grown ruby that looks like a little donut with a hole in the center and... Uh, I believe it's a concave pat. It's not important, but the gear has a pivot, and it it goes into that little hole in the jewel. And when the gears turn, it reduces the friction, so you don't have steel rubbing against steel. You have steel rubbing against this this polished jewel. So it's just as a friction reducing measure. Uh, now the so I already explained that when they said um, so and, and now the frosted effect that's another thing so when they say the bridge jewels must be half frosted uh, they add this frosted glass effect to the edges of the jewel and then they polish the sink of the jewel now for the sink of the jewel just imagine your kitchen sink at home or your bathroom sink whatever sink you have at home that has that you know, dip in it, and imagine all the inside around the drain and all that being completely polished and smooth. That's just for a visual effect, but that that scoop in the jewel is helpful when the watch has to be lubricated. You put a drop of the lubricant, and then the watch is well lubricated. So, and I'm not going to go into detail for mainly the rest of these because it it just takes it would take too long to explain i'd be here for a half hour trying to explain it, so i'll try to go as quickly as i can uh... geneva seal criterion number three the balance spring should be pinned up in a grooved plate with a stud having a rounded collar and cap mobile studs are allowed geneva seal criterion number four split or fitted indexes are allowed with a holding system except in extra thin calibers where the holding system is not required. So an extra thin caliber, um, I'd like to refer to the very thin Vacheron Constantine dress watch that Archie had. Uh, that's a good example of one that you don't need, that this rule does not apply to. Uh, Geneva seal criteria number five. Regulating systems or balances with variable radius of gyration are allowed provided they comply with criterion 1A and 1B. Geneva seal criterion number 6. The wheels of the going train have to be chamfered, which means beveled, above and below and have a polished sink in wheel 0.15 millimeters thick or less. A single bevel is allowed on the bridge side. They say chamfer. Chamfer is just another word for bevel. Uh, Geneva seal criterion number seven. In wheel assemblies, the pivot shanks and faces of the pinion, pinion leaves have to be polished. The pinion gear is the part that enters and touches the jewel. So that, that little pinion is the part that... If you imagine your kitchen, your kitchen or any sink in your home again, you have the little dip in the sink then you have the drain. Well, the drain would in in the jewel of a watch would be where the pivot enters 
and it tw it spins inside of that. Okay, that's a, that's a good way of uh, thinking of it. Uh, Geneva seal criterion number eight: the escape wheel has to be light, not more than 0 0.16 millimeters thick, in large calibers, and 0 0.13 millimeters in calibers under 18 millimeters. And its look locking faces have to be polished. Geneva seal criterion number nine. The angle transversed by the lever is to be limited by fixing banking walls to the exclusion of pins or studs. Geneva seal criterion number 10. Movements fitted with shock proofing are accepted. Now, if you ever see on any of your watches, Inca block, I'm not sure 100% how it's pronounced, I believe it's Inca block, uh, that is a shock proofing system. With older watches, if you drop the watch, the little jewel that rested on top of the balance wheel, that's that spinning wheel inside the watch, uh, the, the jewel would be moved, and then the balance wouldn't work properly. So, the shock proofing system just is just a metal piece around that, that keeps the jewel in place. Now, Geneva seal criterion number 11. The ratchet wheel and the crown wheel must be finished according to registered patterns. Now, when, when that's discussed, it could also come into play with the Geneva stripes. But it's, you know, it's not typically on, you know, the crown wheel. But, you know, when they say the registered patterns. Geneva seal criterion number 12. Wire springs are not accepted. Now, from what I understand, a quartz watch cannot receive the Geneva seal. I believe the watch has to be mechanical. A quartz watch can be made in uh, Geneva, but it... It does. It doesn't mean that the Geneva seal. It doesn't mean it has the Geneva seal if the watch only says Geneva under the word quartz. That just means it's made in Geneva. That's all that means. It doesn't. You know, a common a common brand that you could refer to that has that is uh, Raymond Wheel. They do that on a lot of their watches. Now the Geneva seal is a shield with the word Geneva stamped underneath it. It's just a stamp on the back of a movement. Pieces uh, that have the Geneva seal typically fall into what Archie refers to as the Holy Trinity of watches. But uh, a lot of the brands now are going to the trouble to get it because it really says that you're, the timepiece that you're trying to get it for is, is really true quality. It's because there's a very meticulous standard. So I hope this was very helpful, informative. I thank you all for your time, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.